Hello and welcome to another episode of Lisp Game Engine Devlog. So today I have a lot to cover and most important thing is that I took part in Spring Lisp Game Jam 2024. Uh, if you did too, I urge you to cast your vote because the voting period uh, hasn't uh, ended yet. There is still a little bit of time. Uh, so yeah, my entry is called Cycle of Evil. It is kind of strategic strategy or maybe strategy-ish uh, game uh, like in fantasy setting so like without the direct player control uh, so yeah that's the uh, thing so let me uh, talk a, a little bit about how it is done internally so in order to like release this game to make it uh, I had to do a lot of updates to my uh, libraries. First of all, this uh, game, Cycle of Evil, is based on my ECS framework, so of course it uses all of that stuff, and I actually did a new release, uh, which uh, like gets all of the um, changes I had to make to make this game work. So I got a little bit of uh, like small bug fixes and uh, a little bit of new abilities like ability to uh, define uh, and use components in other uh, common list packages which was important for this game and ability to delete a previously registered system so yeah all of that stuff uh, so then yeah there is this release uh, i named it 0 0.5.0 so it kind of the milestone uh, towards the way, yeah, in a way towards uh, zero one point zero uh, version. So then, uh, yeah, this uh, game of mine is based on ECS, and if we actually have a little look on the uh, source code, so we can see that it has like twenty six systems, and it also got thirty components. So yeah, that's kind of a lot of stuff. But yeah, uh, let's dive into that later. So yeah, the ECS library, then I worked a lot on the behavior tree library and I also did a release uh, for that library called 0 0.1.0, so actually, uh, yeah, f before I haven't used this library in any project, in any game, now I did, so it was, it is now battle tested, so it got a lot of changes too, I added a lot of new types of standard nodes, right? like invert, or random, etc. Um, I've done a lot of bug fixes and I've even did a project logo so it's again this vector thing with a tree and like the this lightning. So yeah that's that. Uh, it, it is now battle tested so yeah it I guess can be used in uh, other projects. So let me demonstrate uh, some of the behavior trees that I implemented within this game Cycle of Evil. So first of all there is this offensive behavior tree. So this behavior tree is assigned to the characters that are fighting with each other, right? Uh, so it, it, it is, yeah, this bushy. It got a lot of nodes, but it actually works pretty fast and good. So then uh, I got the separate behavior tree for the sheep. There is sheep in the game, which uh, yeah, just run and just do that, and then f they also can reproduce, actually. So there is this separate sequence called breed sequence, and then they can actually, yeah, uh, make lo a lot more of uh, themselves. So yeah, uh, there's this tree, and then there's probably the most uh, complex uh, behavior tree for the peasants, for the small guys that run towards the sheep and then just smack them with the hammer and then they get meat out of those. Uh, sheep and then they they just put that meat uh, like for the warriors to eat and then when the warriors eat this meat they can like um, get some HP from that. So yeah it is probably most uh, complex because yeah this guy has to like find a sheep then run towards that sheep smack it with a hammer just wait until it dies and then just grab the meat that is uh, that has dropped from that sheep and then just uh, like move this meet to some another place so yeah it's kind of a little bit um 
uh, a little bit complex and it also uh, he also does of course the wonder off uh, so he got this wonder off sequence so yeah i mean you might think that this uh, might be a little bit uh, not on the side of performance because like every uh, node in this tree it actually makes a separate uh, component in terms of ecs and it also makes a separate system in terms of ecs so yeah you might think that it might be a little bit slow but actually no actually the behavior trees work perfectly i mean they they compile like a uh, shit ton of time but they actually work pretty fast the thing that was working the slowest i mean i actually even did the profiling of the game code and i actually find i actually found the place which was the slowest and surprisingly this is the place where the sprites are drawn so this is this uh, system called render sprites right and it does all of the things that are needed. It does the sprite batching call, by calling this AL hold bitmap drawing. It does all of the like conversion of coordinates, etc. And then it calls via the CFFI, it calls C function AL draw tinted scaled rotated bitmap region. Because I actually got a big uh, texture with different like um, positions of animation of this character right and i have to get the region of that and i also maybe needing to rotate that and i also maybe need to scale it right i do need to scale it because the sprites uh this beautiful uh tiny swords uh sprites are 64 uh pixels um like uh, in width and height and in game if uh, they are scaled down to 32 pixels so i have to do scaling as well and it turns out that if you actually pass the structure on stack like you can in c uh, language uh, it is actually it, it gets quite slow because uh, like sbcl cannot do this natively so it has to do it via the libffi layer and it's actually very very slow so it um it works uh, like the slowest so if you got like a hundred or more than a hundred of characters on the screen like your fps drops to a hundred maybe 150 frames per second so yeah it is quite slow and it, it has to be fixed i mean you don't really uh, you don't actually need this um like uh, color here every time so like most of the time i'm passing here the transparent constant which is just basically the uh, black with the uh, or rather white with the transparency uh, value 255 so yeah most of the time you don't even need that and the problem is in allegro if you want to uh, and allegro is the underlying uh, like middleware graphics library i'm using so in allegro if you want to rotate if you want to scale and if you want the region of some uh, like sprite to be drawn then you have to call this function which also takes the color so yeah that is a little bit of problem but i mean there's nothing unfixable so i guess i can work with that but anyway the number of the characters in the single screen in our game was like kept at around 100 or something like that uh, so yeah that's of that um so let me talk a little bit about other libraries. So I also used this old library of mine called CL Libelagro Nuclear, which adds the support of a GUI library called Nuclear into your CL Libelagro based applications. So I actually moved forward a bit this piece, this interface called declarative interface, right? So it is this nice macro called def window, and it got all this nice like declarative description of the ui you want to draw so i advanced this a little bit uh, forward um and yeah that was that so the next thing i wanted to talk about is the actual uh, new library so uh, i've released a library called clsc bright uh, all the links down below as usual uh, so this new library uh, as you might guess from the name uh, it is uh, intended to to be the parser of a Pride format, which is the format of the uh, program with the same name called a Pride, which is actually a pixel sprite editor, right? So you can like save uh, this pixel sprite animations and then you can load it in your uh, common lisp 
program, right? So yeah, it got this nice uh, different structures. Uh, so we got this interface thingy and it got the destructs for every like meaningful pieces that are stored inside of that um, ASC Pride file, right? So it got the tag, which is how they call the animation sequences. It is the cell, how it is how they call like the separate images. It is the layer, it is the sprite itself, the metadata about the sprite. So here we go. Yes, yeah, so it is working. I've tested it. So actually I would need to write some tests for it, I guess, and also some documentation because yeah, it kind of lacks the documentation except the basic doc strings. So yeah, I would work on that a little bit. I would also work further, I think, uh, the first time I would be working after that is CL tiled uh, library because it is kind of awesome, but it lacks some features I actually need for my future uh, game engine. Uh, so yeah, that's that. And uh, needless to say, all of those libraries uh, and all of the updates are available in our uh, Lucky Lambda repository, the Quick Lisp uh, repository. So you can install it in your Lisp by calling this uh, line. Uh, again, all the links down below. Um, so yeah, I guess that's all I wanted to talk today. Uh, so I would be working further on this uh, engine uh, of mine. So I guess the form of this engine is starting to get in more clear for me. So yeah, I guess uh, that's a nice thing. And at some point in future, I would release uh, like the first version of this uh, engine. So yeah, that's that. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want more, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my uh, Mastodon, um, all the links down below. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, have a nice week, and bye!